Proverbs 8 deals a lot with wisdom. I'm going to preach to you some wisdom tonight. And it's going to be some real practical wisdom. And what I'm preaching about tonight is the sin of celebrating Halloween. The sin of celebrating Halloween. I'm doing it a little bit early because, you know, to give people a chance, if, you, you know, if you're planning on celebrating Halloween or doing something or going to a party, you know, that uh, you'd have time to, to change those plans after hearing the scripture and understanding the problems that exist around Halloween. Now, a lot of people might just think, oh, what do you care? It's not that big of a deal. But I'm going to here show you it is a sin to celebrate and participate in Halloween. For one, this isn't even in my notes. The Bible says abstain from all appearance of evil. And we're going to get in tonight of how evil Halloween really is. Most people in our culture, in our society, don't think it's a big deal at all. They're saying, oh yeah, you're crazy, you're nuts. And they'll try to, to liken you, you know, they'll try to liken us to the Jehovah's Witnesses, who really are nuts. <laughs> but they're going to say that we're like them, you know, because they don't celebrate birthdays, they don't celebrate Christmas, you know, like they, they celebrate Easter. But um, there's, you know, they, there's so many things they don't celebrate. They don't celebrate like any holidays at all because they think it's wrong. But they're, they're wrong about that. Now, I'm going to start off just by saying, you know, in Romans 14, you don't have to turn to stay in Proverbs. Romans 14, verse 5 says, One man esteemeth one day above another, another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. He that regardeth the day regardeth it unto the Lord. And he that regardeth not the day, to the Lord he doth not regard it. He that eateth, eateth to the Lord, for he giveth thanks. And he that eateth not, to the Lord he eateth not, and giveth God thanks. Now, this is a great verse to show, you know, because a lot of people get hung up on certain days. They'll try to tell you that, like, you know, when, when people try to tell you that celebrating Christmas is wrong, celebrating Easter is wrong, like, actually, godly holidays. You know, where we're celebrating the birth of Christ or the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Like, that is what we're celebrating. And they'll try to tell you, you know, no, no. And, and I'll go to this verse and say, look, you can esteem this day. You know, I can esteem this day and you don't have to. And that's fine. And I'm not going to say you're in sin if you don't celebrate Christmas, if you don't celebrate Easter, you know, or if you don't celebrate birthdays. I'm not going to say you're in sin. You know, that's fine. But I'm going to esteem a day you know, esteem one day for the Lord. Like we esteem, I esteem Sunday as a day for the Lord. We go to church, we go soul winning, go to church again. You know, it's kind of dedicated to serving God. Now, you don't have to esteem that day above the other. But the, here's the key, though, is the, of this verse. It says, He that regardeth the day, regardeth it unto the Lord. And he that regardeth not the day unto the Lord, he doth not regard. So God is at the focus of whether or not we're going to esteem a day. Now, you, you can't, and this is why I'm bringing it up, is because Halloween, you can say, oh, well, you don't celebrate Halloween, but I do. You know, I'm esteeming the day you don't. But are you esteeming the day of Halloween unto the Lord? Is that what you're doing when you put on your vampire costume or your, your zombie costume and look like the dead walking around, you know, and in, in, in participating in this, in, in that holiday? You know, which holiday just means holy day. It's not a holy, it's, it's an unholy day. But, you know, so I wanted to bring that up because there are days where it's like, okay, well, yeah, I'm going to do this and you don't have to do that and that's fine and it's not a big deal. Halloween is not one of those days. Halloween is a day that if you do esteem that day of Halloween, of, of, of you know, celebrating and, and, and all the ghouls and goblins and the wickedness that comes out of Halloween, you are in sin. And I'm going to prove that to you. Proverbs 8, where we started, the Bible says, Doth not wisdom cry, and understanding put forth her voice. That's the very first verse. And I, you know, I want to start with that because it's giving you the context. This whole chapter, it's kind of, it's, it's all about wisdom, and there's a lot of personification of wisdom, and wisdom like a person crying out in the streets. Right? So when, when we're reading some of these verses, it's regarding wisdom. It's regarding being wise and having this knowledge. Verse number four says, Unto you, O men, I call, and my voice is to the sons of men. This is wisdom speaking, saying, Look, I'm trying to get a hold of you, sons of men. You know, listen to my voice. Verse number five, O ye simple, understand wisdom. And ye fools, be ye of an understanding heart. Hear, for I will speak of excellent things. And the opening of my lips shall be right things. 
Verse number seven, for my mouth shall speak truth and wickedness is an abomination to my lips. So here, if you have wisdom, you know, wisdom itself is saying, my mouth speaks the truth. I speak what's right. I speak what's good. I speak what's true. But wickedness is an abomination to my lips. Now, wickedness, that's very, this is very generic, right? Wickedness. But what is going on in Halloween? Halloween is all about witchcraft. It's about the wizards. It's about the you know, murderers. You know, people, some people will go and literally put on costumes and dress up like a mass murderer. They'll dress up and, you know, and then maybe they'll go in groups with other people and one guy's got his arm cut off and someone's got this bloody hatchet as if he's a murderer. Murder is wickedness. Okay, we shouldn't be reveling in or exalting and say, oh, well, it's all just a joke. Look, it's foolishness. That's foolish jesting. You shouldn't even be joking about something as serious. I mean, think about that. Think about somebody, you know, these, these, these crazy serial killers, which is who, who they're basically mimicking. You know, people with these meat cleavers and, you know, and they're, they're hacking people up. Like, in reality, how sick and twisted and, and wicked that is. And... and, and you know, people like that really exist that just steal other people's lives and don't care about it, yet you're going to say, oh, ha, ha, it's all in fun, it's just a joke, I'm going to go out and dress up like this. I mean, you know, people need to take a step back and just think about what they're doing sometimes. And it's the stupidest reason in the world and why to do that. Close that and set it down. <clears throat> Because all people are doing when it comes to Halloween, you're just going along with what everybody else is doing anyways. Why, why is it like, like if, if not everybody was out and dressing up weird and, and putting on these costumes, you would never just come up on yourself and say, hey, if you're a Christian, you're not going to say, hey, let's, let's make a day where we could dress up like wizards, we can dress up like murderers, we can dress up like everything wicked and just have fun with it. And we'll put up decorations on our house and, and we'll exalt all this stuff that the Bible says is extremely wicked. I'm going to show you that, you know, here it says wisdom, you know, wickedness is an abomination to my lips. It's not even, I'm not even going to talk about it. It's not going to come out of my mouth. But if that's the case, then what about the witchcraft? What about the murderers? What about those that drink blood? And what about cross-dressing? All of those things happen. People dress up and act out those types of people when it comes to Halloween. For example, witchcraft, right? There's, there's people who dress up like witches and wizards. I mean, a witch costume is probably one of the most famous ones just in general throughout history. You know, Obviously, there's fads of things that come and go, but the black hat and the long dress and you know, black dress and the cauldron and all that, you all know what a, what a, you know, a quote-unquote witch looks like. It's the Hollywood type of a witch. Or the wizards, you know, now we've got the Harry Potters and, and the other, you know, magic and, and witchcraft oriented type of, of movies and shows out there that all the kids are looking up to and they're reading their books and they want to mimic and they're dressing up like these characters. Well, the Bible says in Exodus twenty two eighteen, thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. It's the death penalty in the Bible for people who are witches, people who are wizards, people who are necromancers. And I have an entire sermon where I went through all of this stuff with the psychics. Yet, for some reason, on October 31st, people think that, well, it's not that big of a deal. It's, it's fun to dress up like someone who deserves a death penalty. It's fun. You need to get a, a better idea of what's fun. Well, what about the murders? The murders, same thing. The Bible prescribes a death penalty to someone who kills someone. The Bible says, Whoso killeth any person, the murderer shall be put to death by the mouth of witnesses. But one witness shall not testify against any person to cause him to die. Moreover, ye shall take no satisfaction for the life of a murderer which is guilty of death. He shall, surely, he shall be surely put to death. That was in Numbers 35. People who take other people's lives. You know, it's not, it's not fun in games to dress up like that. What was the other thing I mentioned? Oh, yeah, people who dress up like those that drink blood, right? What about the vampires? What do they do? You know, according, you know, according to, to mythology, they, they drink blood. Well, do you know that there's people that aren't these mythical creatures that people dress up like? 
But these sat satanic Satan worshipers that do believe that, that drinking blood gives them special powers and they actually do these types of ceremonies and, and drink literal blood and that these people exist and you're going to go and dress up like, you know, Count Dracula and I'm going to, you know, this, this blood-sucking demon, devil, that, that, that murders people and lives off of their blood. The Bible says... In Leviticus 7, Moreover, you shall eat no manner of blood, whether it be of fowl or of beast, in any of your dwellings. Whatsoever soul it be that eateth any manner of blood, even that soul shall be cut off from his people. That's another serious sin. Being completely cut off from your people. Have nothing to do, that person's cut off. From eating blood, or we call it drinking blood. The Bible says it's eating blood. But you're going to dress up like one of these creatures. Or even the cross dress. You say, no one cross dresses. Oh, yes, they do. It happens probably more prominently with adults going out to, Hall to Halloween parties than it does even with the children. But people think it's funny, you know, for, for you know, a manly guy or whatever to go out and dress up like a, like a woman. And they think, oh, ha, 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 yeah, it's so funny. Look at this guy. This is a macho guy. He's dressing up like a woman. Oh, that's so funny. God doesn't think that's funny. Okay, the Bible says, The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. Unless it's on October 31st, where God just smiles on it and it's no longer an abomination. Uh, oh, wait, that's not what it says. No, it says that it's an abomination. The moment you start putting on the clothing that belongs to a woman, oh man, or woman, when you start putting on the clothing that belongs to a man, that is an abomination in God's eyes. He doesn't care what day of the week it is. He doesn't care what the calendar says. It's an abomination. It's no laughing matter. It's something that he hates. God detests it. It's, an abo it's abominable. Just like homosexuality is an abomination, cross-dressing is an abomination also. And you say, oh, well, I would never dress up like that. Oh, but you're going to go to a party where there's a bunch of people that are abominable in God's eyes? Does that sound like a good place for a Christian to be? But I dress up like a princess. I dress up like a, you know, whatever. I don't, I don't dress up like anything bad or evil. But you're just going to go around everybody else that is. Let's keep reading in Proverbs. Jump down to verse number 32. Bible reads, Now therefore hearken unto me, O ye children. For blessed are they that keep my ways. Hear instruction and be wise and refuse it not. Look, I'm trying to give you some instruction tonight so that you can be wise. Don't refuse it because, oh, but I just have so much fun. These parties are so much fun. And, you know, my, my friends are getting together and it's just going to be a good time. Look, first of all, you need to understand what a good time is. If you think dressing abominably in God's eyes and being around people dress abominably, is a good time, then you've got, you've, you, you need to, to get a lot of wisdom. And don't refuse it. You know, what people, why do people sin? Because they think it feels good. Because they think it's, it's going to be fun. It's all about having fun and feeling good is what sin is all about. And that that's what is the most important thing. That's why, you know, with alcohol and drugs and fornication and adultery and all these things are all wrapped up in your own feeling. And how do I feel? This makes me feel good. Momentary pleasure. With no regard to the consequences of the sin. Don't refuse this instruction. Let's keep reading. Verse 34. Blessed is the man that heareth me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the posts of my doors. For whoso findeth me, findeth life, and shall obtain favor of the Lord. You get wisdom, you are getting life. But look at verse 36, that last verse. But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. You sin against wisdom, you're doing yourself harm. You're not harming wisdom, you're just, you're acting the fool and you're harming yourself. And look at what this last phrase says. All they that hate me love death. If there is one day that exalts people loving death, it is Halloween. The only thing that could mirror that would be like the Day of the Dead that the, the Mexicans celebrate. They love death. You think about people who love death. I mean, 
there's, you know, some people put up the little pumpkins and stuff in their house, and then you go by some people's houses, which I think even on my street, you know, you've got the, the headstones. It looks like a cemetery in the front yard. They've got the, these, these dead people and ghosts and, and spooky, creepy sounds coming out of their house and all this stuff, and they go all out. Why? The show, I mean, to me, it just shows you love death. Why, would you, why else would you put up all of this stuff? And, you know, the only other reason would be because of fear. It's an exaltation of fear and death. And why, why fear? Because people are afraid to die. People are afraid of these things and, you know, these creatures. So it's, it's a way for people to, to scare other people, which, again, is completely ungodly, and I'm going to get into that in a minute, and exalting death. And the Bible says that everyone that hates wisdom, they love death. So are there people out there that love death? Absolutely. They hate wisdom. They will have nothing to do with it. So, oh, yeah, you're just stupid. Yeah, that, that old Bible. You, know, you, prob you probably believe that homosexuals should be put to death too, right? Yeah, that, that Bible. Yeah, uh, yeah, actually, I do. But um, and think about how weird that is too. If you, if, you, if you were a foreigner and you came to this land and you didn't know anything about Halloween, all of a sudden you start seeing people putting up tombstones in their front yard. And all this weird, scary goblin stuff, just, you know, that's, that's bizarre. I started to think, what's wrong with that person? I mean, really, what's, what is wrong with you? What is going through your head to put all this stuff out in your yard and decorate like that? They have some serious problems. I, I would think, you know, this person's satanic. That's what I would think. Now, most people don't think that way because we've grown up with it and it's become accepted. Look, I've participated in Halloween my whole life as a child. Because it was culturally accepted. Because that's what people do. But we need to start thinking for ourselves and say, just because people do this doesn't make it right. We need to, to gauge whether or not what we're doing is biblical and whether or not it's against Scripture. All this fear and this exalting fear and trying to scare people in the haunted houses and everything else, it's wickedness. Here's a verse that you probably recognize if you go out soul winning. Revelation 21.8. Ring a bell. It gives all these sins about people who, who shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone. What are the first two words? But the fearful and unbelieving. The fearful. Fearful is listed in that list of sins, of things that you can do to deserve the lake of fire. Being fearful. You know, murderers, liars, sorcerers, idolaters, whoremongers, all these people are listed in this group. All these wicked sins, but it even says the fearful. Fearful is in a list of people who deserve the lake of fire, and you're going to go out and try to make people fearful? You're going to try to make them afraid and participate in that type of a sin? Probably didn't think about it that way before, but I'll tell you what, this is what the Bible says. The Bible says that God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. That's what God is. He, is, he hasn't given us the fear, the, the, the spirit of fear. We are not to be fearful. We're not afraid of what man can do to us. We're not afraid to be afraid of what anything can happen or anyone can do to us. The only fear that we're supposed to have is a fear of God. God is the only one that we are to fear. All throughout the Bible, do, it, do a study for yourself and see when the Bible's talking about fear, the only time it's a positive mention is when it's talking about fearing the Lord. Amen. We are not to fear. And, and this exaltation on Halloween of, of making people afraid and you know, going to these haunted houses. And look, I understand it all. And I understand the mentality that just says we're just going out to have a good time. You need to rethink what is a good time. And especially if you say, you know what? I still think it's fun. Are you bold enough to just say, well, I don't care what the Bible says. I don't care that being fearful is a sin worthy of hell. I don't care. I'm going to go and try to get afraid anyways or make other people afraid. It's a bold statement. I mean, you're, you're just completely, you know, take that for yourself and see what you think compared to God's word. Halloween's a very dark holiday. And you know what I mean when I say dark, right? It's, it's, it's everything that's wicked and dark and, and, and not right and not light. I mean, people go out and celebrate Halloween at night. I mean, it's a, it's a night type of a holiday. It's a dark holiday. 
It's things that have to do with, with, with being scared in the dark. The Bible says in Ephesians 5, 8, For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. If you're saved, you're a child of light. God is light and in him is no darkness at all. We should not be celebrating these dark holidays. Sit up. What else happens on Halloween? People go out and think about this. You know, again, it goes with this culture. And well, this is what people do. When the kids go out, they go out trick-or-treating. Right? I've done it many years of my life. Trick-or-treating. Well, how many people, how many of you even stop to think about what does that even mean? Trick-or-treating becomes like one long word. Trick-or-treating. I'm going out trick-or-treating. Trick-or-treating. What, what is trick-or-treating? Trick or treating, what you're saying is when you go to a house, you say trick or treat, you are asking that person, do you want me to play a trick on you or are you going to give me a treat? That is literally what is being said. You say, well, that's not my intent. You know, it's just everyone does it and people just give out candy and all this other stuff. But look, when you go out and doing this trick or treat, and this is how it started. It, it, because it, it all started this way with, with people going out and saying, if you don't, you know, and, and if they didn't give them something, they're going to, you know, perform some prank on their house, whether it be toilet paper, or what, whatever the prank may be, it doesn't even matter. But you're saying there's going to be a repercussion if you don't give me something. You know what that's called? That's called extortion. There's a word for that when you say, you're going to give me something or else I'm going to do something bad to you. This is what the mob does. Now, bear with me. I know it's a, you say that's an extreme. Say, oh, well, you're not like the mob when you go out trick-or-treating. But what are you doing? And why are you doing it? Why, why are you letting those words come out of your mouth? Why are you letting those words come out of your kid? What are you teaching your children? You say, well, my children don't understand any of that. They just go up and they get the candy. Yeah, but what are you teaching them? Even if it's subliminal, what are you teaching them? What are you allowing them to go through? Why is this an accept acceptable behavior? Why? Why do we want to teach? Even in a, at, a, at a subconscious level, it's okay to go up and tell people trick or treat because eventually your mind's going to be thinking about that. What, do you, what does a trick or treat mean? And I know it did for me as a kid. I, I, look, I'm, you know... <laughs> I thought about this before, and then, and then you start getting in your head and thinking, you know what, maybe I will start playing pranks on people if they don't give me something. And that's what people do, and you hear about the pranks go out all the time. Kids, kids get into a lot of trouble on Halloween also because they like doing pranks, and they think it's just it's all part of the day. It's all part of the fun. And they go out and destroy property and do all, do all kinds of things. It's wickedness. It's lawlessness. It's, it's not good. It's not something that Christian should be involved in. And here's what the Bible says about extortioners. Because this is serious. Now look, I know your kids aren't thinking that necessarily, or most people might not even be thinking, well, I'm going to do something bad if they don't give this to me. Right? That's, I know that's not what most people are thinking. But just because you are not thinking it doesn't mean that's not what you're saying. When you say trick or treat, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 5.11, but now I have written unto you not to keep company. It's talking to Christians. If any man that is called a brother be a fornicator or covetous or an idolater or a railer or a drunkard or an extortioner with such an one, know not to eat. It's a very serious sin. It's a sin in the Bible that, that is worthy of separating from brothers in Christ, brothers and sisters in Christ. Extortion. 1 Corinthians 6, 9 says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. The Bible is very clear when it comes to extortioners. And you say, well, I don't think it's extortion. Well, that's what's being taught. Okay, whether you think so or not, that's what's being taught. Even at, at, a, at a small level, that is what you're saying is, is deemed to be acceptable. Now, I could go on and on about all the specific examples of, of costumes people could dress up in, but I don't think I have to. I think it's pretty obvious if you live in this country, 
what Halloween is all about. You see the decorations, you see the people going out, you know, there's these drunken parties that are happening for the adults. And the adults, it's even worse because nowadays it's like, you know, we had, we used to live in a house and there's like a neighbor would throw parties and stuff or you just drive around sometimes if it's, if it's October 31st and you know, like, like I'd be driving home from work and you drive by some places. Nowadays you see like the ladies are dressed up like prostitutes. They're in these costumes where they're literally like, is that a hooker or is that just someone going to a Halloween costume uh, party? Because they're literally dressed in almost nothing and it's gotten so depraved the, the way that, that people will even go out and think it's acceptable. And you know what I'm talking about if you've seen this stuff. It's, it's, not, it's not godly at all. And it's no place for a Christian to be. So I'm going to close with this point. It's a shorter sermon tonight. It's a pretty simple message. Halloween's coming up. You know, and, and you know, there's another reason why I bring it up. I make a very specific point in our bulletin. If you've noticed, we are having a potluck on October 31st. We are going to be celebrating not, we're, we're not going to, excuse me, we're not going to be celebrating Halloween. This is not a celebration at all. We are going to be having Christian fellowship. We're going to have a campfire, marshmallows, and maybe singing some hymns you know, enjoying each other, maybe playing some games and just hanging out together as a group. Why? Because we're providing an alternative for people who, who maybe feel like they want to go out and, and do this party. It, you know, it, not everyone is as strong and as bold to say, Halloween's a sin, it's wicked as hell and I'm not going to have any part of it. I'm not going to go worship Satan and I'm not going to do all this stuff. And they may have a lot of people inviting them and saying, hey, why don't you come to our Halloween party? For one, this is an excuse to say, you know what? No, I've got something else going on with my church, but thanks anyways. <laughs> it's also an opportunity just to get together and, and just completely avoid anything that's going on in the world with Halloween and just say, hey, we're going to spend this time together as a church and have good Christian fellowship. But it's, it's, it is, you know, I make a point to make clear this is not a Halloween party. I, want people, I don't want people coming to this event dressed up in a costume because they think it's a Halloween party. It's not. It's an alternative to all the world's garbage that's out there. It's not a celebration. We're going to enjoy each other's company. Now, as far as the costume thing goes, this wasn't in my notes either. I just want to bring it up because I don't think wearing a costume in general is a sin. I don't think that's wrong to wear a costume. You know, if someone wants to to, you know, the, my kids play, they all have their own little costumes of different things and they play around in them. They have princess costumes and, you know, like a little dog costume or whatever, all these different things. They like to play around in them. I have no problem with that. But I'll tell you what, I'll tell you one thing for sure. They are not wearing their costumes on October 31st because we're going to abstain from all appearance of evil. We're not going to let people think that, oh yeah, there's Pastor Burzins and his kids and they're celebrating Halloween because we don't. Make it very clear, make that abundantly clear that we're not even going to have the appearance of evil. It's not the costume necessarily that is what the sin is. Now, there's many costumes I think it is sinful that you should know. Like the cross-dressing. You know, it's, you know, a man should never be dr dressing up as a woman. That is a sin. That is abominable. There are people that should never be exalted that, that you're dressing up like them and thinking it's cool or funny. There's a lot of things that are like that. There's women should never be dressed like a whore unless you actually are one. And even then you shouldn't be dressing like a whore, but it's still a sin. But then you've got bigger problems than just how you're dressed. But I want to close with this. How many of you have gone out trick-or-treating in your life? At least the adults. Because I know I have. And... There's so many Christians that do the same thing. They've gone out trick-or-treating in their life. They've gone. And here's what this, this, this is what they mean. There are, many, there are so many Christians, probably almost every Christian in America, the, the vast majority of Christian people who are saved in America that have gone out trick-or-treating means they've walked up to total strangers' doors, knocked on their door, rang their doorbell, and had some at least limited conversation with that person in order to get a treat, in order to get candy. And that's even as a child. Now, how many of those same Christians 
are too afraid to go to some stranger's door and knock on their door and try to bring them the gospel and try to bring them the truth and try to get them saved and say, that's just too weird. I couldn't imagine myself going up to some stranger's door and just talking to him about Jesus Christ. I mean, that's just weird. I can't do that. Well, you did it for candy when you were a kid. You went up to some stranger's house and talked to him and, and, and said, give me a treat. You had the boldness as a child to go do it. Oh, because everyone else was doing it? Well, why don't you come to our church where there's a whole bunch of people going out sowing? Why don't you go to a church where there are other people going out? If that's what you need, well, someone else is doing it, then I'll do it too. Go to a church where people are going out and getting people saved then. But I'll tell you what, even if you don't go to a church like that, there are lots of people that go out and preach the gospel to every creature. What, I mean, if you can do it for a piece of candy, could you do it to maybe prevent someone from going to hell? That's the door-to-door -door that needs to be done and not this, this extortion for some candy. If you're a Christian, you have no business participating in this wicked, sinful, what they, you call it a holiday, this day of Halloween. It's of Satan. It's not of God. It has nothing to do with glorifying God. And the contrary, it glorifies demons and devils and everything that's wicked and everything that's wrong. Let's bow our heads and have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much for the clear wisdom and instruction that you've given us from the Bible, dear Lord. I pray that you please help us not to be deceived by this world and the worldly philosophy and um, not to care if you know, someone might call us a fuddy-duddy or, or someone who, oh, you don't have any fun. Lord, it's not that we don't know how to have fun. We'll be having plenty of fun on that day uh, with other brothers and sisters in Christ, dear Lord, and we'll be having a great time. But it's not, it has nothing to do with having fun. It has to do with having respect for your word and actually showing some wisdom and keeping the abom abominable things far from our lips, dear Lord, and not, and not reveling in them and not exalting them or lifting them up in any way, shape, or form, dear Lord, but rather decrying them. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.